Hello, I'm Anthony David Hobbs, and this is going to be my review of Ewoks The Battle for Endor. Not to be confused with the Battle of Endor. No, that's a different battle in Return of the Jedi, yeah. Oh, but before I do, I'll start right at the beginning. Um, well, in the Ewoks cartoon, Morag the Tulga Witch, I assumed Morag was a name made up for the show, because I'd never heard it before. No, Morag is a name from Scotland, so... <laughs> That's not an exotic alien name, no, which is a bit silly, yeah. Well, speaking of original names, the character of Wicket, who's like the star of the Battle for Endor, um, Wicket, um, when you play a game of cricket in England, you need three things. A cricket bat, a cricket ball, and a wicket to play the game, yeah. Cricket is a popular game in England, Australia, and India, yeah. So was Wicket named after a wicket, yeah, the implement you need to play a game of cricket? Or is it just coincidence? Because cricket is not a popular game in America. Maybe George Lucas has never heard of a wicket, and it's just coincidence that he's called wicket. Even so, um, I thought George Lucas was well-educated, you know, and he says how he knows lots of stuff about different cultures all over the world. Well, if he's so well-educated, why has he never heard of a wicket from the game cricket? Yeah, why has he never heard of cricket? Yeah. But uh, there we are, yeah. We'll just, for the, for, we'll just have to assume it's coincidence that Wicket has the same name, yeah. And, um, however, there is a character in the Battle for Ender called Noah. Now, come on, I'm pretty sure George Lucas must have heard of Noah from Noah's Ark, yeah, so, yeah. And I didn't like that. Even as a child, I thought it was silly there was a character called Noah. Because, uh, no, come on, when I think Star Wars stories, I think original alien names, you know, no, that's, that name's been done before. Could it be symbolic, he's called Noah, because at the end of the film it's his responsibility to transport Zindel to the Promised Land, a bit like Noah transporting a load of people to the Promised Land. But uh, no, I, I think that's silly that there was a character called Noah. But he was played by Wilford Brimley, who was a very well-respected actor in the 1980s. He gets top billing, even though he's not the lead character. No, Wicket is the lead character, but there we are, yeah. And, um, okay, so, I'll start at the beginning. When I was about ten years old, I'd seen the first two original Star Wars films, but not the third one. So you want to see the full set? Yeah, I wanted to see the, the whole trilogy. I went to a video store with my dad, couldn't find Return of the Jedi anywhere, you know. And uh, I was astonished, how can it not be here, you know? Well, when I was ten, Star Wars was very unfashionable at the time, yeah. And then eventually, uh, yeah, my dad found a movie that had Ewoks on the front cover. And I had a look at it, it was Ewoks The Battle for Endor. And I thought, well, that'll have to do, that's the next best thing, yeah. And I was, yes, I was going through an Ewoks phase at the time. I was, because I'd seen the cartoon, I was obsessed with them. I thought Ewoks were super cool, yeah, yeah. So yes, very popular with children, Ewoks, yeah. And uh, the thing is, in the 80s, they had all these um, like cartoons, like the Smurfs, uh, biscuits, uh, pound puppies, um, wuzzles, care bears, uh, and acorn green. Oh, that was a comic book. But you know what I mean. Cute little guys. Lots and lots of cute little guys. That was very popular in the 80s. So George Lucas thought, well, we've got Ewoks. Let's make money with them. Yeah. And um, in Battle for Endor, no, we don't see Chief Chirper or a T-Bow, no. And we still just see, well, basically a lot of generic Ewoks, you know. But all the attention seems to be on Wicket, yes. That's the character we're all familiar with, and I was familiar with because of the cartoon, yeah. Okay, a bit of nitpicking here. Um, well, look at Wicket's eyes here. They're all just one colour, because that's what he looks like in the film. There's no dots for the pupils, no. Which makes him look a bit more alien, so I thought that was a good look. That's what he looks like in Return of the Jedi, but not in the two Ewok movies. No, they give him dots for pupils, which I didn't like. No, no, that's silly. Was it to make him look more human or more like a Care Bear? No, no, he looks silly and goofy, yeah. Because, of course, the Ewok characters don't blink. So with pupils, they sort of look like this. No, that's a silly, goofy look for the Ewoks. No, if it's not broke, don't fix it. They should have left them the way they were. Okay, the story. Right, okay, the story, and yes, spoilers in, the, in this review. Ewoks, the battle for Endor, starts out very peaceful, but then there's a big epic laser battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, um, an Ewok adventure has quite a slow pace, whereas the battle for Endor, we get straight to the action straight away. Yes, cut to the chase, yeah. And um, an Ewok adventure, Caravan of Courage, ends with a happy family being reunited, all smiles, happy ending, yeah. In this one, Sindel... 
Her parents and her brother are brutally murdered right in front of her. Oh my god, no, that's horrible, that's terrible. Yes, this is, oh right, a totally different story this time. It shows what a brutal place the forest moon of Endor can be. It's, it's a tough place to survive, yeah. And uh, the people, that they're called the Marauders, the big villains, who are not native to the forest moon of Endor. No, they're stranded on Endor, the same as Sindel's family are. And yes, they've killed them because they want that power unit um, to, to power up. They're stranded. They need a battery for their spaceship to power it up and make it leave. They don't know the proper name for it. They just call it the power, you know, the, the canister, the power unit. Why this big fighting, though? If they want to get off this moon and Sindel's family want to get off too, why don't they just share the power and, get, and, and fix the spaceship and get off like that? Maybe Sindel's family would be happy to help them fix their spaceship and then leave. Well, the Marauders are quite dumb. You know, they're like Neanderthals. They, they just use violence to get what they want. That's all they understand, yes. Quite stupid, but unfortunately they have wits enough to know how to pull a trigger of a laser gun and blow stuff up. Yeah, yeah. Very vicious and aggressive. And Oh yes, the actor that plays Sindel's father is a different actor. Now, I don't know why, but for whatever reason the original actor didn't want to resume the role. But it's a very small part, you know, because he gets killed very early on. It's a very small part. It's just one day of work, but no, no, he wouldn't do it. And one of the last things he says to Cinder was, get away from here, go to the Ewoks, they'll look after you. You'll be safe or safer than you are here, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, Wicket and Cinder, kidnapped by the Marauders, they managed to escape out of this cart thing. And, oh, yes, in an Ewok adventure... I was a bit disappointed there were horses pulling the cars. I wanted exotic alien creatures pulling the car, you know. Well, we see alien creatures done by stop-motion animation pulling carts in this one. So, yeah, that's, that's an improvement, yeah. And these alien creatures are done by the stop-motion expert um, Phil Tibbet, who's done lots of special effects films, yeah. Anyway, Wicket and Sindel, they wander about in the woods, and a, a flying creature uh, almost kills them all. And we see the Ewok glider again. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Here it is. It flies and drops a rock like, like it doesn't return in the Jedi, yeah. I thought the Ewok gliders were really cool when I was a kid, yeah. I was a bit disappointed that the Ewok glider had so little screen time in Return of the Jedi, yeah. Well, we see one again, more screen time in An Ewok Adventure, and we see one in action again in um, The Battle for Endor. So yeah, that's pretty cool. However, the wings are not shaped like this. And the not shaped like the toy. The reason for this is because in both Ewok movies, they used a real glider, actual real flying glider. Yeah, okay, there's one bit where they use special effects, but you know what I mean. There are bits where they use footage of a real glider flying. Now, the reason the wings are not shaped like this is because if they were, it wouldn't be able to fly. Yes, so the Ewok glider may look really cool, but it's not very aerodynamic. No, it wouldn't fly in real life, yeah. Anyway, um, then much later, Wicket and Sindel, they find an abandoned house in the middle of a wood. That reminds me a bit of, um, yeah, uh, Snow White finding a seemingly abandoned cottage in a wood, yeah. This has a more fairy tale look to it, yeah, more fairy tale than science fiction, yeah. And um, afterwards they meet the character Noah, who at first doesn't want them in his house at all, but uh, eventually he warms to them, yeah, and they, they become friends, yeah. And he wanders off on his own, but doesn't want them to watch him, because, uh, well, he, he goes to see another a, a crashed star cruiser in a different part of the forest, and yeah, because he crashed the same way Sindel's family did. But he's almost given up hope. Without the proper power unit, there's no way it's ever going to fly, no. Oh yes, and there's a bit where Sindel is, she wakes up before the others in the early morning and hears someone singing and, and calling her name and uh, she thinks it's the voice of her mother. But Sindel, she knows her mother's dead and her life monitor thing, that watch thing, tells her that she's dead, but she follows the voice anyway. Then when she gets close enough to hear this woman singing in the forest, she can see her and clearly see it's not her mother. But she still goes up to talk to her anyway. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. Don't talk to strangers. No. I would have thought, after living on the forest moon of Endor for a long time, Sindel would wise up. You know, you, don't you have brilliant survival skills? You know there's lots of things trying to kill you everywhere. But no, no, she goes up and chats to her, and then Sindel gets kidnapped. Yeah. So Noah has to go. Noah and his the creature that can run really fast, Teak, and Wicket have to go and rescue um, the kidnapped Sindel. Now, at the castle where she's being kept, there, there is the power unit capable of fixing a star cruiser. 
But Noah doesn't know that. No, he doesn't know that. No, so <laughs> so he, but he goes to rescue Sindel anyway. So yes, he goes out of his way to help a stranger. So so yes, he's um, he's he's his character has developed. He's become like a hero. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of heroics, around the cut the Marauders live in like this medieval castle. Around it is a moat, but instead of water, it's full of acid. Now. It will disintegrate any living thing that falls in, yeah. So Wicket, he uses like a rope to to swing over the, the, the moat, but it's a bit too long, and his feet, is the soles of his feet are singed by the acid. And Noah says, get your feet out of the water, get your feet out of the water. But he doesn't. All he has to do is raise his legs a bit, and then his feet won't be touching the acid. But he won't, he refuses to raise his legs, so Noah has to pull the rope so that he's out, out of the away from the acid. I thought Wicket was this brilliant warrior that has superb survival skills. Doesn't he have wits enough to pull his feet away from the acid? <laughs> yeah, so, yes, even as a child, I thought that scene was a bit silly. Yeah, And, um, okay, um, the power unit, um, they don't know the proper name for it. They just, the, the marauders just call it the power, yeah. And they just know that they need it to, to get off the forest moon. They don't know how to fix spaceships or anything. They do have, seem to know how to fix laser guns, yeah, because the laser guns have, like, bandages on them. They're, like, made of odds and ends joined together. So they're just scavenging for what they can find. They have limited resources, yeah. Anyway, Noah and Teague and Wicket manage to save Sindel and rescue all the other Ewoks being held captive there. They get away from the medieval castle. And, um, yes, then they, they get ready for the battle. They know the marauders are coming for them. And in the forest, Noah can't make it fly, but he uses the, the power unit to make the Star Cruiser's weapons are working again. So if any enemies come, they get in the gunner bits and shoot anything that comes near them. Shoot any enemies that come near them. So um, what does that remind you of? The Millennium Falcon, when Luke and Han have the quad lasers and shoot any enemy enemies that come close, yeah, any TIE fighters. So it's a bit like that. I suppose the sole difference is instead of outer space, we're on the ground shooting things. It's a bit like a Star Wars film on a very small budget. Yes, <laughs> okay. Not just laser guns. They 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 use uh, arrows and spears, and they, they use a catapult to fight the marauders. Whatever's available, basically. Yeah. There is, however, a problem with this. If this is set before the events of Return of the Jedi, and the Ewoks have learned how to use laser guns. Why don't they know how to use them properly in Return of the Jedi? Yes. Why do they fight the Empire with spears and rocks when they, they know what laser guns can do? Yeah, that's a bit of a problem there. But overall, I think Battle for Endor is a big improvement on an Ewok adventure. It's slightly less immature, and it's a more gripping story. The plot is, is more better constructed and stuff, yeah. It doesn't feel quite so random as the first one. Yes, this, everything happens for a reason, yeah. And uh, they've, they've fought off all the Marauders, or they think they've all gone. No, for one last scare, one last battle, the, the leader, Tarak, with his big sword, he wants to fight Noah, who fights him with a staff, so they have hand-to-hand combat, yeah. And then eventually, he's, uh, Tarak is destroyed by that magic ring thing, which disintegrates him. The magic ring, it's not the Force, it's a different kind of magic. Yes, the Star Wars fans always point that out. It's not the Force, it's magic of a different kind on, on the Forest Moon of Endor. And, um, well, that there, there's a, a sort of like a sad ending. Yes, Sindel has to get back to her, her home planet. No, uses the power unit to fix the Star Cruiser, and they leave, but there's an emotional goodbye. She says, goodbye to Wicket, you're my best friend, I'll visit you as soon as I can, yeah. A bit like the end of E.T., really, yes, an emotional goodbye, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so overall, I think it's, it's, it's good for what it is. You're on a television budget in the, in the mid-80s, so yes, I think it's good for what it is, yeah. Okay, a little nitpick about originality now. Um, why do the Marauders live in a medieval castle? Is it to give a more fairy tale look? Or is it because He-Man, that, that was a very popular cartoon at the time. Yes, He-Man combines medieval elements with science fiction elements, yeah. Well, there is a scene when Tarek gets the power unit canister, holds it up in his hand and says, I have the power. I wonder where he got that catchphrase from, yeah. But then, the He-Man franchise did copy a fair few ideas from Star Wars. And now Star Wars franchise copying He-Man franchise. So, yeah, the wheel has come full circle, so to speak, yeah. Well, if you're a big Star Wars fan, I think you might enjoy, you know, the Ewok cartoon. Or if you loved Ewoks as a child, as I did, then yes, it's 
Because you've got to understand, seeing the cartoon first, then seeing live action, that, that was really cool, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so an improvement on the first Ewok film. That's the best way I can sum it up, yeah, a bit of fun. Okay, thank you for watching. I'm Anthony Hobbs, and I'm never bored.